From CGTN headquarters in Beijing, this is The Hub with Wang Guan. Hello and welcome to The Hub. I'm Wang Guan in Beijing. We've all heard of the ping pong diplomacy. Well, Ahmed Latif, current foreign secretary of the Maldives, used to be an avid table tennis player back in the days. So he has a thing or two to share. He witnessed firsthand the Chinese engagement with his country. He's now striving to promote people-to-people -people exchange between China and the Maldives, and table tennis plays a substantial role. With the Hangzhou Asian Games just around the corner, I recently sat down with the Hamad Natif for an exclusive interview to know what makes him tick. In 1973, just a year after China and the Maldives established diplomatic relations, 18-year-old Ahmed Latif and his teammates visited China ahead of the Asian African Latin American Table Tennis Invitational Tournament. During their stay, they trained and prepared for the tournament with Chinese athletes. They witnessed the first-hand burgeoning friendship between China and the Maldives. I have with me two colleagues uh, from the Maldives who were with us in 1973 uh, on our first trip to China, uh, to Beijing, to participate in the Asian, African, Latin American Invitational Friendship Tournament. Uh, it was the first time the Maldives team in any sport traveled abroad. And uh, the two colleagues who are with me here, uh, Mr. Hassan Habib, who was the uh, captain of the team, and Mr. Hura Abdul Sattar, he is, uh, he is one of the key players uh, in the team. Uh, the other players who were in the team, unfortunately, uh, two of them have passed away. Uh, we regret that we were not able to make this trip while they were still alive. But it is an important occasion for us. Uh, it's a historic occasion because we are marking the 50th anniversary, the Golden Jubilee of our first trip to, uh, to, to China. And uh, we are extremely delighted uh, to be back uh, to this beautiful city uh, and to uh, relive the memories from our previous visit. Uh, our visit to China, uh, in terms of uh, uh, promoting table tennis, was a big step uh, because it was only after our visit to China uh, that we saw uh, and we learned how to play table tennis. Uh, I like to believe that the, uh, uh, the, the modern day table tennis was introduced uh, by us uh, after our return uh, from China. So it laid the foundation of uh, the, uh, the present day table tennis in the, in the, in the Maldives. Uh, since then, the government of China has helped the Maldives uh, to promote table tennis, particularly uh, through various um, uh, programs, by sending coaches, by having our players come to China for training. Uh, 1973, uh, China was totally different from what it is today. And uh, we could uh, see that the country was making great efforts to improve uh, the quality of life of its people already. Um, I uh, took the uh, uh, opportunity to write a diary uh, during my visit uh, in which I have written down everything from day one, from the moment I left Maldives uh, till the time we went back. Uh, it was over three weeks and uh, I have recorded everything that we saw, what we did, uh, the experiences we had uh, uh, during this time. And I had it published in the only newspaper in the Maldives at that time. And uh, through this, we were able to uh, tell the people of Maldives what China was like. Uh, but what I have seen over the years is that uh, uh, the people of China uh, has remained the same. Uh, we, uh, we enjoyed the best hospitality even during that time and uh, we continue to do that uh, even today. So the, uh, the Chinese people have always been uh, most uh, hospitable and they have welcomed us uh, uh, 
even now as they have done uh, in the uh, in the 70s uh, during the tournament we played with many countries unfortunately uh, we did not uh, play with china because uh, it was uh, grouped into uh, teams were grouped into different uh, uh, groupings and uh, but we played with a number of countries and i remember the the only country against whom we won was Kuwait. Uh, we lost all the other matches, but it was a big achievement for us, we believe, because it was our first time abroad, and uh, we were very happy that uh, we won uh, the match against uh, uh, Kuwait. Um, uh, but what, is, what was most important was that uh, we learned much from this experience. And when we went back, we were able to have a huge uh, improvement in the style of play, in how we uh, did everything, uh, how we uh, promoted the sports. It became more popular also in, in the Maldives. Since then, a team has established an enduring bond with China. In 2007, the Maldives was preparing to set up an embassy in China, and Latif became the nation's first ambassador in the country. I will relate a very interesting story um, uh, about uh, my experiences uh, when I was here as ambassador uh, some years ago. Uh, when I came here, um, I had the opportunity to talk to a, a journalist. And we talked about my former experiences as a player in 1973 and uh, how, how I came to China and my ping pong connection and everything else and then I showed her some pictures taken during that time in 1973. Uh, we had two guides, uh, a man and a woman, uh, young people at that time and I wanted to see if I could trace them, if I can find them in China. I knew uh, China had 1.3 billion people so I realized that it may not be very easy but I thought I would give it a try. So what I did was I got her to publish this photo uh, in the newspaper uh, and write an article about me and uh, given the contacts of this lady, uh, the reporter, uh, the, to see if I can find the people in the picture. And surprisingly, after a few days, I get a call from her to say that uh, she has found one of the, um, one of the guides who were attached to us uh, during that time. Um, and then she lived in Shanghai and she came to Beijing. She wanted to meet me and we met after 35 years. And I found this uh, very interesting because I didn't, uh, be I didn't think that it would be possible. Uh, it, it shows that, you know, the, uh, if there is a, a way of you know, if it is the fate that it, it will happen. So we were very happy to uh, reunite again, uh, to talk about the old times. And uh, uh, so this was a very interesting uh, experience I had uh, after I came to, uh, to China. Uh, we have had a very close uh, connection with uh, China uh, through table tennis. Uh, when I was ambassador here, I did a lot to promote uh, uh, friendship uh, and people-to-people -people contact through table tennis. Uh, for four years, uh, between 2008 and 2012, every year from our embassy, we organized a diplomat's table tennis tournament. Uh, and through this, we were able to bring the peoples of different countries together. Uh, make more friends. I also had the opportunity to uh, work for our table tennis association in the Maldives and uh, during which time again we had a lot of exchanges. Our players, we sent them to China. We had Chinese players uh, come to Maldives. China is assisting us uh, to develop table tennis. Just uh, uh, last month we had a memorandum of understanding signed between Yunnan province and our Table Tennis Association uh, to develop uh, table tennis uh, in the Maldives. Uh, as we speak, uh, we have some coaches in Hangzhou uh, who are training uh, uh, 
Uh, they're going through a development program uh, in China, in Hangzhou. And also our young players, they have left for trading uh, this morning uh, to Kunming. With the Hangzhou Asian Games around the corner, this seasoned athlete who competed at the Beijing Asian Games in 1990 has something to say. Asian Games uh, is one, uh, one sporting event, regional sporting event that uh, we always pay particular attention and we have the largest number of athletes. We have always had this uh, uh, participation at a very high level uh, in the Asian Games. Uh, so we are very uh, much looking forward to that. But as you know, the Asian Games, uh, when it comes to table tennis, is very challenging because uh, if you compare Asia <laughs> with the rest of the world, uh, Asia is stronger. And so Asian Games becomes as strong as world championships. <laughs> so for us to compete, uh, it's, it's difficult. But we always uh, uh, enjoy the experience and we, we look forward to our participation in that. As the first and longest serving ambassador to China, Latif envisions a future of robust economic collaboration, vibrant people-to-people -people exchanges, and enduring friendship between China and the Maldives. Yes, I was uh, privileged uh, to be the first ambassador. Uh, it, is, it was very special for me. Uh, and I uh, also had the pleasure of serving here for the longest time, five years. Uh, and it was during very exciting times. Uh, you had the Olympics, you had the 60th anniversary of your country. Uh, you also had the Shanghai Expo, you had the uh, Asian Games in Gonzhou. So a lot of things had happened during that time. And, and also um, because uh, of the relationship that we have with China, uh, we have a very strong relationship. China is an important development partner for us. Uh, China has assisted us in, uh, in a number of important infrastructure projects, including human resource development, uh, uh, training. Uh, we had a lot of medical doctors here, a uh, lot of important uh, projects in the Maldives, including uh, in the area of housing. Uh, the China Maldives Friendship Bridge uh, remains a key uh, symbol of our close relationship. We are very, very happy uh, with our relationship, and uh, uh, President Xi Jinping and our president uh, and our foreign ministers. Uh, they are all uh, very keen to bring forward uh, and to further strengthen and raise our relationship to new heights. So we are very optimistic that the future of our cooperation is, is very bright. Lakmei, classic opera by French composer Léo Delibé, is now being staged at China's National Center for the Performing Arts. It is a poignant love story between a British officer and an Indian woman during the British Raj. It is famous for its flower duet. The performance features artists from all over the world. Ahead of the premiere, we were treated to a sneak preview and talked to the team. <laughs> The story takes place in India, uh, occupied by the British. So this gives birth to a series of uh, conflicts between the two cultures and the two nations. And in this uh, conflict, we find a beautiful love story. Lakme, daughter of uh, a Brahmin priest, falls in love with a British soldier, Gerard. It's a kind of Romeo and Juliet settled in India. The melody is very superb, and then you, you have harmonies, because Delib was the composer, was a specialist of harmonies, and the, the orchestra is also very beautiful. 
there is especially this flower duet moment, which is a real moment of emotion when you have two women singing together. And it's uh, so beautiful because it's about friendship. It's the, one of the most famous uh, duets in the history of opera. So it's like we want to give the perfect or the, the best version to the, to the audience. And to do that, we have to find the right colors, uh, the right emotions, uh, the right phrasing. We keep contact with each other and also with the, with the conductor. So the role of the conductor is to bring the music uh, alive, you know. It was written by the composer some time ago. So the composer studies the score and then he works with all the people in an opera, from the singers to the musicians to the set, to make sure that the show will be a global, uh, you know, performance. We keep each other the, the hands very often. We look at each other when we sing together and also when um, uh, Lakme is singing alone, I look at her and uh, with, uh, with, you know, with love and affection. This opera is about love and exoticism, so it's things that really go to the heart and it expresses through the music. So it's my role to make this music very, very expressive, intense. So I try to inspire the musicians and inspire the singers to give really their best. Lakme brings together many exotic elements to symbolize Indian culture, such as paintings, novels, and music, thus presenting Lakme in the most favorable light. Examples of cultural fusion have been featured in prominent operas, like Madame Butterfly, which led to the craze for all things Japanese at the turn of the 20th century. Not to mention the Chinese folk song, Mo Li Hua in Turan Dot, a melody that epitomizes the bound between China and Italy back in the 1920s. Well, uh, it was a period in which many uh, works of art, many paintings, uh, uh, books, uh, novels, uh, and plays, and as well as musical uh, pieces, were inspired by those exotic uh, uh, settlement. In particular, this opera uh, is the result of uh, a play written by Pierre Loti, who was a military traveling all, all over the world for his military duties, but who wrote many, many novels. He wrote an, a novel called The Wedding of Loti, which was settled in Tahiti. On the contrary, Delib moved the action from Tahiti to India. What is special is that it is the respect of the fashion of the time. Following this uh, fashion, uh, Delib wrote this opera settled in India, and this exotic uh, settlement with beautiful flowers, with beautiful perfumes, is the, the secret of the success of this opera, together with very beautiful melodic music, especially there is a duo in the first act that everyone knows because <laughs> has been used very often in the publicity of uh, perfumes. And uh, so everyone knows this beautiful flower duo. That's how it is called. At that time of um, music uh, in the late uh, 19th century in France, there was a very strong influence of Orientalism, you know, both in paintings with Delacroix, for instance, or in literature with Flaubert and in music. So Delib had this idea of bringing some elements like percussion or exotic melodies to this music. This has been done uh, also uh, a couple of years before with Carmen. It was not Hinduism, it was Spain that was also exoticism. So Carmen had a very strong influence on Delib. 
But there was also at this time Wagner, you know, for the harmonies, for the chromaticism, the colors in the music. And Delib, he went to Germany to listen to Wagner. And this was also a strong influence. So I think Delib is like the link between the tradition of French opera with Bizet and impressionism that will come later with Debussy, Ravel and the paintings of Monet. So you can hear al already in uh, this music by Delib what will become later this fascination for exoticism. By portraying, blending elements from remote cultures and places, exoticism caters to the curiosity of the audience. Yet most of the time, it's a result of some imaginary intuition. In this creative art form, where's the line between authenticity and stereotypes? We don't know that much about the Chinese uh, culture, so everything for us is quite new. And the same is, I am not surprised that, that many singers, many artists who interpret Western uh, operas, they have no idea who are the characters that they are interpreting. Because how can one pretend that they know all the European history? So they sing about an English king or a French uh, uh, saint or an Italian poet, but of course they have not the basic cultural element to make uh, uh, that character become himself. This will take years, years and years. In order to fill the gap, there should be more knowledge, more teaching of Western culture uh, in uh, Chinese school. But this is pretending a little bit too much. I understand that uh, of course, priority is given to Chinese history and culture. The protagonist's love transcends cultural barriers, and this cross-cultural theme is also reflected in the production of the opera. It is a collaborative endeavor between the National Center for the Performing Arts and the Royal Muscat Opera House along with other opera houses, bringing together the creative wisdom of artists from around the world. From the world's world, there are many artists. There are Romanian artists, there are Italian artists, there are Audi artists. So our work is French, Italian, Dutch, and English. To talk about the most interesting thing, when we change the language, we need to change the channel of language. 比如说，导演正在说这一部戏第一幕的时候，导演正在说说呃，尼拉坦塔和拉卡梅呃在这个场上发生的变化，他俩之间的交流的时候，他用的是意大利语说。可是回过头来，指挥在做做音乐作业的时候，说这一段唱段的时候用的是法语。我们和指挥交流的时候是用法语，但是突然间又转换回来用意大利语，所以有的时候可能会跳戏，就是比较出出我们这个、呃、这个戏的这个当时的感觉。呃，对于中国的歌剧市场，我认为现在是在整个欧洲的歌剧市场和整个世界的欧这个这个舞台当中比较重要的这样的一个呃是这个点，在国家大剧院制作这方面来说，是在世界上应该算是最先进的水平，而且对于国家大剧院对于剧目的选材方面也是跟欧洲比较接轨的，所以说我认为欧洲的歌歌剧市场也好，中国的歌剧这些市场也好，还是世界的这个歌剧市场也好。我认为我们还是比较呃明走在前面的，所以这个对于中国之后的十年二十年，我认为应该算是在世界上最大的歌剧市场的这个呃呃摇篮吧。别人一直认为古典歌剧是小众文化，但是我觉得随着我们的这个呃生活水平日益的提高，随随着我们的年轻的一代，他们对这个历史、对文化的这种。呃，学习他们这这种熏陶，包括现代的社会，因为是个网络时代，我们所接触到的这个世界的世界观、价值观、人观都不一样。我们会慢慢的都喜爱上这一门艺术。其实它不是一个小众的文化，它是一门艺术。就像外国人看中国的那个京剧，他会认为说，虽然我听不懂，但是我很喜欢去看，我很喜欢去感受。一样的，那我们中国的观众走进剧场，我们也是通希望通过我们不懂的语言
来感受这一门这个艺术。所以说，我认为通过国家大剧院这样的一个平台，呃、也通过《拉克梅》这一部戏吧，我希望能够吸引出到更多的年轻人走进歌剧院。The challenge is to import a story settled 400, 500. One thousand years ago, in another world, in another historical context, and have it realized by young people, because our people are all very young, who don't know much of that culture, of that history, but do their best to contribute in regenerating those histories. This is the very important、uh, challenge that we are.、Uh, Realizing, and we are having a big success. So much that、uh, our production are increasing always more and more. And this is、uh, a very practical example of collaboration between different cultures. Language is not a problem because we speak a language which is international: art and music. This is one of my main passion, of course, because I grew up in this tradition of French opera, and for 20 years now I am bringing this to the world, you know. And this is so interesting to bring together people that come from different tradition and explain them what is the French style, which is very, very special and particular. It's made of transparency, of clarity, of colors, of melodies, and you know, music is the universal language. So through the music, I think I can bring all the people from all different, coming from all different countries, to gather in this and make sure that we are in the right French style, which I think is really very touching to to the heart. When I am here in China, I feel that opera is alive, and it's something that is touching people now and in their all day life, bringing something really emotional and、uh, extraordinary. So I I, lo I love very much being here. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of the Hub. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Meng Guan in Beijing. Bye for now.